How do we practice the process of release? Here we go. Number one, you need to understand the consequences of extended stress in your life. Why? Because this motivates you to do something about it. You'll never do anything about anything unless you understand what effect is having on your life, the consequences. You know that stress, distress has consequences in your life? It lowers your immunity. It affects you psychologically. It affects the relationships. It affects you spiritually as well. Look at what Jesus said in Mark chapter 4 as he's describing the working of his word. He's talking about a sower that goes out and sows seed, some by a path, some by rocky ground. Then he comes to this and describes the sowing of his word in the hearts and lives of people and says, still others like seed, that's the word of God, sown among thorns, hear the word. They hear the word of God, but... But the worries of this life, they hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, the desires for other things come in, and what happens? Choke the word. Would you call that a consequence? The word is choked because of what? One aspect of it is the worries of life, the distresses that we find ourselves in, so we have to take stress seriously. You have to take it seriously. Then the second thing that's necessary, how do you practice the process of release? Identify and acknowledge your distress. Know where you are on the symptoms that I described a few moments ago. Recognize those in your life. Identify them. Realize when you're there. Realize when you've peaked and now you're at a very distressed place in your life. Use those symptoms. As the psalmist said in Psalm 31, be merciful to me, Lord, for I am in, what, I, what am, I in, am I in? Distress, my eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and body with grief. David realized where he was, and he asked God for help. He wasn't hiding his distress. He was acknowledging his distress. 